Hey guys, Jason here. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, that time of the month, it's time for the book club discussion. The book we read in September was My Best Friend's Exorcism, um, and we will talk about it here in a minute. But before we get uh, into the discussion, uh, I just want to do go through the administrative stuff. So, October's book is Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. I started reading it um, about halfway through. Um, that's all I'll say for now. But if you haven't gotten a copy and you want to, you know, read the book uh, and then talk about it at, in the beginning of November, um, you still got time, so go ahead and do that. Now, the book for November, as selected by you, I put a uh, post up, um, a poll up in the community tab back in the beginning of last month, and uh, you guys voted, and the book that you selected was... The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones with 33% of the votes. The second place was Goblin by Josh Malaman with 25% of the votes. And so since it sounds like you guys um, are interested in that book, I'm going to read it uh, outside of the book club stuff and probably do a review on it at some point. So there's that. Thank you everyone who voted. Uh, that was awesome. It was 70, 72 votes which uh, is pretty good. The other three books didn't really, none of them got more than 20%. So uh, it was not really close. Those were the two front runners for sure. The Only Good Indians. Go ahead and get yourself a copy. Um, and in November, we're going to read this one. So now for December, I'm going to do the same thing. Um, I'll post a poll for you guys. Uh, so the five books that I selected, I wanted to do stuff that kind of had like a wintry feel, a Christmassy feel, something in the snow and spooky in that way. Um, so I came up with Ghost Story by Peter Straub, Secret Santa by Andrew Schaefer, Mistletoe by Allison Littlewood, Snow by Ronald Malfi, and The Terror by Dan Simmons. So I'll post that up. I'll put a link in the description so you guys can check that out. And uh, yeah, vote for whichever one you want to read. So also, I uh, started an Amazon affiliate thing. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put links to all the books um, in the description. And so if you want to buy one of these books or whatever, if you follow the link and buy it, I'll get a couple of pennies, um, which is cool. You know, then I can buy more books. So now let's get into the discussion without further ado. My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. This was a pretty good book. I did enjoy this quite a bit. I read it, it, it read really fast. Like, I think I read it in two or three days. Real, real quick, before we get into any sort of bookish discussion, how about this cover? My God, it's so awesome. I love just like the old 80s feel of it. It really like fits with the tone of the book and the setting of the book. So I thought it was really cool. But this, this is the second Grady Hendrix book that I have read. Um... Uh, not counting paperbacks from hell. I read uh, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires last year, and I really, really liked it. Uh, I think I liked it better than this one, but that's not to say that I didn't enjoy this book at all. Uh, it was very good. It wasn't really scary to me. It was really, like, gripping and, like, page-turny. Like I said, I read it in, like, two or three days. Um, it's not a terribly long book, but uh, I just... I just couldn't put the book down like I just kept wanting to know what was going to happen and so uh, Grady Hendrix had, does a really good job of that um it was the same thing with the Southern Book Club I just couldn't stop reading it I wanted to just know what was going to happen the whole time so uh so yeah I really enjoy I really enjoyed that I really was um invested in what was going on in the story now real quick I'll just give like a quick spoiler free sort of synopsis and then we'll get into like the meat and potatoes of the discussion here so basically this book is it's an exorcism book i suppose more so than that even and more it almost feels this book almost feels like a teen like a mean girls type of story it follows our two main characters abigail and gretchen they're like best friends they've been friends since they were little it goes in a little bit with how they met and kind of their relationship and how they you know their friendship has developed over the years but uh it takes place in the mid to late 80s i think and uh 
they're in high school they're like sophomores or something and they just do you know whatever what normal kids do they hang out with their friends and they go to school and they do their thing so one night they're out partying uh so it's abby gretchen uh and then their two friends margaret and glee that's like their little group that they hang out with they're you know they're they're hanging out they're drinking beer they're having a good time at uh, i think it's margaret's house they decide to take some lsd I don't know where they got it. I think one of them got it from like their brother or something. They take the LSD and it doesn't, it doesn't like work. It's like bunk, bunk LSD. So they're just, you know, waiting for it to kick in, waiting for it to kick in. And then, uh, I don't know, they decide to go skinny dipping or something. And Gretchen runs off and she jumps into the water and then they can't find her uh, for a while. So they're looking for her. And they're not able to find her until the next morning she like comes stumbling out of the forest she's like naked and they're like what happened and she like doesn't she's acting all funny she kind of like doesn't remember well i mean she was lost in the forest naked all night so i'm she was she was she was definitely in distress um so anyway abigail and gretchen they she takes her home or whatever over the next little while gretchen starts to act weird yeah the story kind of unfolds from that it's kind of this mystery of uh Abigail trying to figure out what happened to Gretchen that night and why she's acting all crazy. And then it gets pretty wild. If you haven't read it, uh, like if you didn't participate or didn't know about the book club or whatever, and you have not read this book, um, I think you should read it. It's especially like, it's a really good Halloween book. It takes place over Halloween. At least part of it does. October is a great month to pick it up. So go ahead and do that. That's going to conclude kind of the spoiler free section. Now I'm going to take the gloves off and I'm just going to talk about all kinds of stuff. So, um, again, if you haven't read the book and you don't want spoilers, then you should you should go read the book and then come back. Well, let's talk about the horror elements, I guess, in this book. I didn't really think it was very scary. Um, and I don't think it's really meant to be, like, scary. Like, it's, it's more supposed to be just, like, a fun, rompy 80s horror, you know? And it's like a teen sort of drama too because a lot of it is about like the relationships between abby and gretchen and then between their friends a lot of it is like this like parents just don't understand kind of thing where you know like all the adults are horrible and treat abby like shit and like don't believe her and all this stuff when she's when she makes these claims and stuff there was a couple of parts that were kind of gross out horror like, uh, there was a scene with some worms that was gross. There's a lot of kind of implied stuff going on, like one of the characters, Glee. At least at first it's implied. It eventually becomes very explicitly stated what's going on. But she, like, has a crush on one of her teachers. And they go to this, like, private Catholic school. So it's kind of... He's, like, a priest, um, which makes this maybe even worse. But they start to have a relationship together, and then it's not good. There's that kind of stuff going on, um, which is sort of outside of the exorcism. Although, I will say Gretchen kind of plays a role in a lot of this. Um, she's the one that's that's possessed. So the characters, at least the main characters, Abby and Gretchen, I thought that their uh, relationship was really... It was a nice friendship relationship. It felt like a real friendship between uh, two young people. I didn't like Gretchen for most of the book. Now, granted, most of the book she's doing mean, horrible things to people, um, and she's, like, not the person that she is. She's possessed. So there's that. I don't think you're necessarily supposed to like Gretchen that much. So this book is told from Abby's perspective, and you definitely empathize with her the most. Um, and there's definitely times where you're like, why are you trying to help Gretchen? She's a total asshole to you and to everyone else. Why do you, what are you doing? But then, you know, they are really, really good friends and they've known each other for a really long time and Gretchen's acting weird and Abby knows that something's wrong. So like, it makes sense um, in the context of the story and stuff. Uh, but Gretchen does some pretty, pretty mean things. She convinces her friend Margaret to start taking these diet shakes. And after a little while of doing that, she starts to lose a lot of weight and people start to like give her more attention. So she kind of gets like, addicted to them in a weird way like she ends up she ends up pretty much only eating these diet shakes and 
there was a really cool like I, I i really liked the way that this was done where like there was one chapter where it showed like her food journal that she was keeping you know what she ate on day one and then on day four and then on day, and like as it went through it was like fewer and fewer of all the other other foods that she was eating and more and more of the shakes until eventually she was only eating these shakes and the whole time i was like oh god this is bad something something something's not good here that sense of dread was there like i knew gretchen was doing something nefarious uh with the shakes but i wasn't sure what and then and then yeah uh she ends up leaving the school and everyone's like what happened to margaret and all this stuff well they find her her parents had shipped her off to this like super run down beach house to live with her brother who's like a drug addict i don't know they just like put her in a room and let her waste away and there was this is the worm part there was like these worms all inside of her so it turns out gretchen had been feeding her the eggs of these like of these tapeworms in the shakes and it had just ravaged her body like she was full of all these worms and the doctors were like oh yeah it's dangerous to eat more than like one of these this is like a big diet thing in the in europe where people will infect themselves with tapeworms for a couple weeks to lose weight that was the grossest part of the book i'd say and that was yeah that scene was pretty was pretty gruesome but other than that that's one thing about this book. There wasn't very much violence. Like, that was the pretty much only kind of bloody gross part. That's maybe one thing that I didn't like about this, was it didn't really feel like a horror novel until, like, the very, very end. Other than, I guess, during the actual exorcism, a very small portion of this book. It's, like, the last 60 pages. There was another scene that I didn't quite understand, or I, like, I know why it was in here, but it seemed like very forced and like contrived um, because it didn't make any sense to me there was a scene where they go on a field trip to this body farm where there's all these dead bodies and cadavers remember these are these are sophomores in high school and i don't know i i wasn't in high school in the 80s but i there's i just can't imagine they would take a class full of 16 year old kids to a like a body farm place and it was like one of the one of the other ridiculous things was there was a a bucket on the ground that was just full of dead babies fetuses at various stages of development just sitting on the ground in the open at this body farm and then you got a bunch of 16 year old kids running around looking at all the stuff it was just very strange and i think it was like it was for their health class or something like that, or like anatomy, physiology, some sort of, it was like school related, but I was just like, really? I don't think that any school anywhere would do, would take kids like that, that age to a place like that for a field trip. It just seems shoehorned in there for a plot point. What happens is apparently somebody steals one of the dead babies out of the bucket and of course as the reader we know who did it <laughs> we know gretchen did it and then she uses it as a way to blame abby like she she like plants it on her later and gets her all in trouble and like with the police are involved and all this stuff that's one thing i'll say about this book too is like her her parents and the principal everyone they're just so just ridiculous like her parents are kind of kind of not great they're very detached and they don't really like show her very much affection at home or anything like her dad barely talks to her and her mom is working all the time and is kind of a bitch i mean i don't know it's like they don't know their daughter at all because like for them to think that she would do like steal a baby i don't know it's weird this is set in the 80s so there's like this sat satanic panic kind of backdrop where people think that there's all these satanists running around and everyone's a satanist and and so when they so i guess that's part of it it's like when they find the dead baby they're like oh she's a satanist or whatever there was another scene that really bothered me it was towards the end of the book when gretchen kills her dog i don't really understand what the point of that was well one i love dogs and i don't like it to see them get killed but also i don't really understand what the plan was 
Like, how are you going to blame that on Abby? You know? Uh, or who are you going to blame it on if you're not going to blame it on Abby? It was just kind of... It didn't really make a lot of sense. There wasn't a lot of... There was no reason for it other than just to kill the dog, I feel like. Like, just to show that Gretchen was not the same person that she used to be. Because, you know, in the earlier in the book, she loved that dog. If that was the only reason, it was just to show that she had changed and, like, convince you that she's not in control, that this is indeed a possession, I guess. But Abby is reluctant at first, but she contacts this, like, meathead preacher guy. He's like a bodybuilder for God or something. It's kind of weird. She contacts this guy to help her with his exorcism because she's like, I don't know what to do. My friend is crazy. So he helps her. This guy's hilarious. He's like such a bro and weird. And he was one of the, the, the funniest characters in this story, I thought. I don't know. I just, you think about the exorcist and it's, you know, some, some old withered priest, old man, frail guy going into a room and, and, and exercising the demons out of some young girl. And this is like this, like bodybuilder gym rat guy. <laughs> and I thought that was funny. Anyway, so he helps her with the exorcism. Halfway through, he kind of loses faith or something and is like, I gotta go get my dad. So he leaves. And he just leaves Abby and Gretchen in this like weird, in like this abandoned house together. And so Abby kind of has to do the exorcism on her own. I thought it was really cool too. Cause she like had this script and she started out, like she started, you know, she had like prayers and things like God stuff. Like eventually she was like, I don't give a crap about this. Gretchen doesn't give a crap about this. Like I'm going to use, I, I'm going to use our love and memories and things that we have bonded over over the years to try to pull Gretchen out of this mess. And so she started talking about all the things that they had like connected with over the years and like why their friendship was important and all of those things. That was what that was what did it. The love conquered the demons. It was uh it was a cool scene and um fit thematically uh with the book pretty nicely. And I want to touch on too like the setting. Um so it's set in the mid 80s. I think the setting fit nicely with the story. I thought it was it felt like the 80s. Um, there was a little bit of like, just like referencing stuff from the 80s a little bit. It wasn't to the extent that like Ready Player One was. Like that book's horrible. This was much more tasteful. And then a lot of the things that were referenced ended up paying off later. Like I was talking about when um, during the exorcism, she had to like bring up all the stuff that they had like connected with music and movies. And it made sense in the narrative as well. And I thought it was cool, too. Like, each of the chapters was named uh, after a popular song. But it also tied into what was going on in the chapter. So, uh, yeah. So, the 80s references. The, 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 the 80s nostalgia stuff. Like, that was... It was well done. Now, the ending of the book, Abigail's parents are still pissed at her. They still... Like, the police are still involved and all this stuff. At this point, she's got all this, like, legal trouble going on with, you know, stealing a baby, even though she didn't. Um, and now, kidnapping Gretchen killing their dog and again none of this stuff actually happened but um the police thinks that she did so she's like at risk of going to like jail the exorcist dude comes out of nowhere and confesses to everything and, and gets her off the hook which was a sacrifice for him i mean he ends up going to jail for like 10 years or something like that so good on you bud like that was cool they still and end up moving away uh, so, like, Gretchen and Abby are separated for a long time. They eventually meet back up together, like, later on in life, have a pretty close relationship for a long time. And that's what, like, the last chapter of this book is about, their relationship later on in their life, all the way until Abby dies. And it's really sad. It was an emotional ending, and it definitely um, tied the whole thing up. Like, this book, while it's a horror story about an exorcism, it's really about this lifelong friendship that is, that can withstand any obstacle. Like, no matter how bad things got between Abby and Gretchen, like, they were still best friends and forever. Uh, that's what the story is about. That's pretty much all I've got to say. I like Grady Hendrix quite a bit. If you want something fun to read around Halloween, this is actually a pretty good, uh... This is a pretty good one. Read Kill Creek this month, and then we'll talk about it next month. And then, in November, read The Only Good Indians. Go vote. Um, on what you want to read in December. I want to thank everyone who 
read the book and is going to and is participating like this has been a lot of fun for me um to get to read along with you guys in the comments in the last in last month's exquisite corpse last month uh was really cool i loved reading all of that stuff and so same deal here leave comments with with whatever if you agree disagree have questions or want to go more in depth into any of the any of the stuff that i talk about um yeah that'd be awesome just put her down in the comments and, and we'll talk anyway that's all i got so uh thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time peace